Hey everyone, it's Blue Lizard Jello, and welcome back to Blue Plays Lords of the Fallen. And no, my voice isn't quite recovered yet, but we're gonna press on because I need to play this game, so why not share it with you? Last time we just got through the tutorial, we fought a tutorial boss, but then a new boss came in and absolutely destroyed me. It's the same enemy that we saw in that opening cutscene, the one that actually killed the previous uh, lamp bear, I guess is, is what we're calling them. And now I'm back here. I assumed that that was a natural point where I was supposed to die. Also, there's something banging on a chain somewhere nearby. Okay, just an enemy back there. Love that musical transition. I did have a theory, not a theory, but an idea. Supposedly, I can use my lamp at any point to go into the Umbral Realm. What if I were to go into the Umbral Realm and go face that boss? I want to test that out. That is just so fascinating. Okay, so you can interact with your vestige. So that's something you can still do. Now you can see 50% of my health is now withered. I can regain that by attacking enemies. But what if I were to go down here? Okay, Vigor Recovery After Death. We've already seen this because I have died. If you perish in Umbral, all of your current Vigor will be dropped at the spot where you died. You can recover your dropped Vigor with your Umbral Lamp by approaching and pressing X, but beware. Some enemies might pick it up before you and you'll need to defeat them to recover it. Okay, so we have another Bloodborne system in play. However, if you die again, then it will be permanently lost. Yes, we are very familiar with that mechanic. Um. Oh, interesting. Okay, so... There's no longer a boss here. So it looks like that one enemy who flies down with the three-headed dragon beast, you get one chance at killing him. Which is fascinating. It, it's, not, it's not altogether unusual that you only get one shot. It's unusual in that normally, in a Souls or a Souls-like game, when you have a tutorial boss that you are supposed to lose to, then there's a cutscene and something happens, but... Seemingly not here. Okay. Let's approach with caution here. No umbral blisters or anything. Fl good. Flayed skin. I was hoping we'd get something like that. And what, what exactly is flayed skin? It's a quest item. A piece of skin taken from Samuel. A former Dark Crusader executed for dereliction of duty and brother of Paladin Isaac. The day Isaac was elevated to the rank of Paladin was the proudest day of his life, and he solemnly vowed to Aureus that he would carry out whatever holy work was demanded of him with purity, obedience, and resolve. It's weird. This is the skin from Isaac. But, excuse me, this is the skin of, of Samuel, but then the description is about Isaac, his brother. The gate does not budge. Uh, what now? That was peculiar. Very strange, the Umbral Realm. It's going to take me a little bit to fully understand what's going on here. Uh, umbral Parasites, okay. Umbral Parasites can symbiotically merge with other creatures, protecting them or granting enhanced power. So some sort of shaman-like creature. Select your Umbral Lamp and find the Parasite with L2. Siphon Parasites with R1 to destroy the... Oh, wow. Okay. So that's the Parasite right there. Okay, let's uh, let's do a, a Soul Flay if we can. Oh! Wait a minute, what in the world? Ew! I don't think I realized what was happening yesterday. I say yesterday because it was actually yesterday for me playing, but when you actually soul flay, you take their soul out and then you can attack their soul instead of the enemy themselves. Oh, another map, this time of abandoned red cops. Am I supposed to be able to read this? Because I'm not really sure how. Sometimes moths indicate that your path is blocked, but there's something in the Umbral Realm. Well, I'm already in the Umbral Realm. Lock onto an environment, uh, environmental element and soul flay it. Now, can you soul flay elements without... Ah, yes, you can. Alright. 
it's fun that there's going to be some, you know, puzzle elements here. One thing that I don't currently care for is the fact that the tooltips, the tutorials pop up based on your proximity, based on your geographic location. So you might have already done something, but then it'll come right back when... Now, can I just drop down there, though? And what would happen if I did? Not willing to test that right now. Okay, what do we got? Let's go ahead and siphon you. Oh, I can't because you're an NPC. <laughs> My apologies. I always wondered if there were others. You're probably thinking that map's just a tool to be used as you see fit. Take it lightly, and you'll find it's the other way around. The voice is still really quiet, despite the fact that I think I have it completely maxed out here. I do. Alright. I'm going to actually turn down the environment a little bit. Maybe down to 70. Even effects down. That's probably good. I just want to be able to hear what they're saying. I don't know who you are. And I don't care. But since it seems a deer has you marked. Making you a bigger threat to the rogue ourselves as both. I've defied the rules of gods and kings. If you know any kind of freedom, you'll do the same. I've defied the rules of God. If you know Alright, not much from the Iron Warfare. Wayfarer. Vestige of Hanalore. Okay, so now we can warp, which is nice. Oh, and there's actually some lore behind this. Rannick had always been alone. His life one of isolated, directionless wandering, punctuated with moments of rage, violence, and pain. Any kind of real human connection forever an alien and an unattainable concept. It was only when he became a bear of the umbral lamp that he understood why. Because his destiny was to be an eternal bringer of death, his solitude to date merely preparing him for his role. But after the umbral light abandoned him, Rannick soon died the way he had lived, alone and without purpose. Good. Starting the uh, Souls Like Strong with the depressing character backgrounds. Hey, yet another mechanic. Stigmas, fragments of past events, often traumatic, which occurred in Axiom can appear in the umbral realm as stigmas. Select your lamp, raise it, and rift by holding square to transition to umbral. Well, we're already in the Umbral Realm. Rift to Umbral first. Then lock onto a Stigma. Select your lamp. Soul Flay it to reveal a fragment of the past. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and suck up this blister. Okay, kind of a cool way of doing some story here. Minor holy salts. That's different than the other salts, right? So is that going to add holy damage to one of our weapons? Add holy damage. Yep. Okay. Back up. Go ahead and take a hit here. Why not? Just to see. Yeah, the regain works really well. Especially, I think, with these fast fast weapons. Now, there is a patch coming here soon. Oh, Fire Ward. I'm guessing that's going to be fire protection of some sort. Yep, increased defense against fire. So, there's going to be a patch coming soon that will increase the performance from what I understand. It's really a shame that there doesn't seem to be any backstab mechanic. So can I drain? I guess I can't, huh? Okay, what do you... Oh, you're going to do some sort of projectile. What else we got? 
Okay, back up. Whoa, we... Whoa, what is happening here? Um... You're... I was gonna say you're pretty weak, but then again, you just came and, you know, came back to life. Wow, this is... What? Wait, where's my health? I'm about to fall. I don't think I can do anything here. Could I not heal? Does that not heal in the Umbral world? Oh, I had a modifier of three. Was that the danger that I was facing in the Umbral realm? I don't think you want to stay there very long, huh? Alright, well now we can take a look. Do you have anything to say now that I'm back in the regular realm? No. Oh, interesting. So there's not even... Of course, that makes sense. That you wouldn't have those specters there. So I could go back, but maybe we won't for now. Let's let's learn the game a bit more before we just start focusing on always being in the realm of death. Okay, nice shove. Good kills, good kills. Mana stone. It'd be nice if I can actually get some magic at some point. Back up. Hmm. Yeah, I do want some sort of backstab mechanic or some way to get criticals. Did I get that one item that was floating? Was that the mana stone? No, I didn't. No, well, it was mana stone. That was just, you know, me predicting the future, apparently. Broken... Oh. I like that the shove doesn't actually do damage. That's nice. Alright, let's take a look. Was that an actual weapon? It was. And it's considered a dagger. Does slightly less damage... Does have a strength requirement. Fewer religions have been formed around worship of Judge Rogue than his fellow judges, but many of them agree on the notion that with the right... Excuse me? With the right... <laughs> we're going to get there. Oh my goodness. With the right combination of imagination and violent intention, anything can become a weapon. Okay. Some good sound design here. So what do we have here? Some limbs? Are they practicing a little grafting? That's a lot of enemies, huh? Well, let's bring them over here. Oh, oh, the lock-on changes so quickly. The lock-on change is extremely quick. So now, I'm not dead, but I'm in the Umbral Realm. Which is super interesting and kind of terrifying. Oh! Oh, I didn't know that I timed it that well. Oh, you have a parasite. You have a parasite. Okay, get a big hit. Or a series of hits, good. This is a really interesting mechanic that you get kind of a do-over if you die. Not a do-over, because it, it does get a lot more difficult. I should probably take care of this ranged enemy, huh? Oh, 
Oh, did I just stun you by dashing into you? Alright, let's switch to my throwing hand. And let's see. Can I release? Oh, didn't want to do that. Doesn't really matter. <laughs> That's such a weird animation. Ooh, Pilgrim Garb. Do I want to stay still and read that? <laughs> Weathered Skirt of a Pilgrim and Garb of a Pilgrim. Is there any way to compare? Yep, yeah, and this is why... Okay, you can heal. I don't know why I didn't before. Grab this blister. Oh, nope, just kidding. I just broke the blister. <laughs> kind of gross. Ammunition pouch and small ma- Okay, so ammunition pouch. I gotta imagine those are gonna refill my ammo, right? Yes. Very cool. This game has a lot to remember. You seem terrifying. Oh yeah, you're strong. Back up, back up, back up. Oh, have a little soul flay. Okay, careful now. I should probably heal. I don't think I want anything to do with that. Wow, no, I was right. I did not. Okay. Maybe some progress is in order. Yeah, one thing I'm not loving is the the targeting. It switches very very easily. Now that was interesting. I feel like I just sidestepped the enemy. Completely accidentally. Okay. Could have gotten the Grievous there. Somewhat uh, forgive. Oh, Corrupted Penitent Loincloth and the Belt Cape. So what do we have here? Threadbare and filth encrusted loincloth. Okay. Oh, fantastic. I do like the belt cape though. Let's see, 72 physical damage, and this is the torso. Actually, it's better. Wait, drop? Oh, because I have to do it from equipment. Oh, okay. So 49 to 72, a little bit heavier, but all right, kind of dig it. Let's go take care of you. Let's clear before we go try that enemy again. Ooh, that's a good charge attack. Wouldn't have minded a double plunge attack on you. Okay, I accidentally got a parry on you. Uh, 
Uh, why do you have that? Oh, does that mean that you have a parasite? Oh, shoot, so I have to enter. Oh. I have to go get your parasite in order to kill you, huh? All right, let's do it. It actually knocks enemies away, which is kind of nice. Nice Grievous there. Oh, no, no. Oh, shoot. He has mine. Okay. Uh-oh. We definitely heal. Oh, my goodness gracious. Which means I just lost all that umbral. Uh, Vigor, excuse me. Wasn't expecting this this much challenge right away. Let's test their leashing capabilities. Oh, why would you do that already? Whoa, he's just still going. Are those mushrooms on the ground? This is this is not going well. There we go, Grievous. Not quite dead. Nice charge R2 though. There we go. Ooh, Proselyte Sword. And got my Vigor back, which wasn't very much. Let's take a look at that new weapon, though. 19 Strength, fantastic. <laughs> sword of a Proselyte, and that's all I know. Now. My Strength is 9. I was just wondering if... Is, there a mechanic where if you two hand a weapon you get a bonus to your strength I would imagine there probably is but even if my strength were doubled I wouldn't be able to use that which is a shame okay maybe I just need to focus on parries or or this is not going well. I'm gonna die. Or at least go to the Umbral. Oh, and you have a Parasite, don't you? Why am I not going in? Okay, we're good, we're good. Just keep moving. Hmm. Okay. Next uh, minor point of concern. The constant knocking over or uh, getting stuck on the environment with your weapons. I'm using tiny little daggers. I can't imagine if you're using something like a two-handed sword and it had anything other than a thrust or an overhead swing, you'd be in a lot of trouble. What do we have there? Someone with an axe. Fascinating. Oh, oh. Alright, hey, we got a vestige. 
Message of Marco the Axe. Uh, we can level up. And we might as well rest because, frankly, we need it. I kind of want to do strength now. Because in theory, if strength is doubled to two-handed weapon, then I could use that proselyte sword in two hands. If it's 1.5, I could not. Let's do it anyway. I'm going to want to try and use a multitude of items, so hopefully going up a little bit with strength will prove useful. Alright, let's see. Is this door going to do anything? Gate does not budge. It does have a bell. So, I'm kind of curious. Didn't seem to go where I wanted. No. Very silly ranged combat. <laughs> Obviously, I'm just throwing a rock, but... That seemed a little... A little strange. Okay, let's take care of you. Staggering and backstabbing. Okay. Deplete an enemy's posture dramatically by approaching them from back and delivering a fully charged heavy. Okay. So once again, this is just another Bloodborne mechanic. All right. All right. Well, at least it has one, right? I do love this staff on my back. It looks like it's a weapon, but no, no. That's actually my, uh... It's actually my garb. Ooh. Mine owner's ring. That's quite the yell. Somehow you just completely missed me. All right, let's take a look at that ring we just got. An old tarnished ring increases maximum stamina and stamina regeneration rate. Wow. One of several identical rings worn by the small group of wealthy nobles and business people who co-owned the Sunless Skane Mine, a venture they operated both heedlessly and ruthlessly. Oh, we're about to be attacked. Take care of you. We got to put that ring on. All right. So this is where... Oh, I just see. We did a big loop. actually falling down I think was an accidental progression oh we got a lot of enemies incoming Whoa, a lot of enemies incoming. I'm hoping to get multiple enemies of this. Oh, what? Why am I stuck? Oh my gosh, they just keep spawning even behind me. Hmm. Oh, I don't have healing left either. This is a little bit odd. Okay, am I actually clearing them now? Well, they're, they're still spawning at kind of an alarming rate.
Do I just have to make a run for it? Yeah, I don't I don't see myself ever playing this game fully unlocked like I have in many other titles. Ooh. Finally some color though. What do we have here? Pilgrim hood and pilgrim bandages. Oh. Is there a way to cancel this? Yeah, I guess just back step. Hmm. Alright, rush past. Get the ladder. Okay. Nice charge. Good kill. Now what I want to find... Oh, emerge from the umbral. Yes, that's exactly what I was hoping for. Doesn't necessarily help me. Oh. Is that a nice little shortcut? It is indeed. You were kind of trapped there. Now what if I were to go back down to where that shrine was? Eh, it doesn't look like there's anything there. Oh, that was close. Wait, was it close? I think I still got hit. Nothing there. Holy ward. Okay, that's going to be holy resistance. You... Are you the Iron Wayfarer again? What is this? Nothing, just flowers. You carry the lamp long enough. And you'll see history repeat over and over. If you don't want to keep retreading the same ground yourself, should you fall, make use of this. Oh, your umbral limb vibrates and emits a special color when close to an umbral flower bed. When positioned on an umbral flower bed, select your umbral lamp and raise it and then use triangle to grow a vested seedling. Oh, it serves as a point of revival should you die in umbral. Might as well try it out, yeah? So, this is similar to a mechanic that I think Dark Souls 3 was supposed to have, where you could actually put bonfires in select locations. That's fascinating. Now, can I... Yeah, you can actually use it to level up and everything. All right. Do some strength. Let's do a little strength. I know it's silly that I'm kind of building towards a quality character when I chose specifically a very high dex character, but I don't want to lock myself out of trying different things. Let's try the Proselyte Sword. Right, I have to do it in equipment. I mean, it doesn't really... Oh, it did say can't use it with the prop with these stats, but there's no... There's no X... So if I put that on, and then I put that on, it was equipped without the proper stats. Um, I don't know, it still says, well, it doesn't say anything about not meeting the requirements. But I guess the damage is probably lacking. All right, let's talk to Iron Wayfarer a bit more. I've given you more umbral guidance than I ever had. From now on, find your own way and stay out of mine. I've given from now on. I mean, part of me wants to just attack him. <laughs> just because he's being somewhat rude. Which is obviously not right. Alright, let's put on the dagger. Let's stay with daggers for now. 
We need the Skyrest Bridge Key. Alright, there are a couple of ladders, right? We are going to wrap up here in just a moment, but let's, let's head up here and see if there's maybe just an item or something. Or... Oh, it's just a way back up. That's all that is. Alright, fair. Well, I'm going to go ahead and call it a part there. This is definitely going to be a learning curve in a, in a very big way. Possibly the most mechanics I've seen in a Souls-like game, at least in recent memory. So, yeah, bear with me as I, um, as I learn the very basics. But that's going to do it for this episode of Blue Plays, Lords of the Fallen. Hope you're still enjoying, and I will see you next time. Oh, I want to face the camera. And I, no. Ah. Oh. I thought it'd be a cool outro if I could face the camera with the lamp.